Have you ever thought that our senses could be misleading us about the real nature of the universe? Reflecting back who and what we are and the choices we make, the worlds we build, they also confront us with questions. What if the reality we perceive is nothing more than an elaborate illusion crafted by our minds? This concept that brings to mind science fiction is at the heart of the groundbreaking work by cognitive psychologist Donald Hoffman. We used to think the Earth is flat because it looks that way. Pythagoras discovered that we were wrong. Then we thought that the Earth is the unmoving center of the universe, again because it looks that way. Copernicus and Galileo discovered, again, that we were wrong. Galileo then wondered if we might be misinterpreting our experiences in other ways. He wrote, I think that tastes, odors, colors, and so on reside in consciousness. Hence, if the living creature were removed, all these qualities would be annihilated. Could Galileo be right? Could we really be misinterpreting our experiences that badly? Well, neuroscientists tell us that about a third of the brain's cortex is engaged in vision. When you simply open your eyes and look about this room, billions of neurons and trillions of synapses are engaged. Now this is a bit surprising because to the extent that we think about vision at all, we think of it as like a camera that just takes a picture of objective reality as it is. Now, there is a part of vision that's like a camera. The eye has a lens that focuses an image on the back of the eye where there are 130 million photoreceptors. So the eye is like a 130 megapixel camera. But that doesn't explain the billions of neurons and trillions of synapses that are engaged in vision. What are these neurons up to? Well, neuroscientists tell us that they're creating in real time all the shapes, objects, colors, and motions that we see. It feels like we're just taking a snapshot of this room the way it is, but in fact, we're constructing everything that we see. We don't construct the whole world at once. We construct what we need in the moment. Imagine for a moment that what you perceive as reality is more akin to a sophisticated computer interface, skillfully designed by your brain to simplify the complex workings of the world. This is the essence of Hoffman's theory, challenging the idea that our senses give us a direct line to the outside world. His work, stirring discussions in cognitive science, philosophy, and physics, invites us to question the very nature of reality as we understand it. According to Hoffman, the complexity of reality causes it to remain hidden from our understanding. He suggests that our perception of the world is not a direct representation of objective reality. We've assumed that there's a pretty tight relationship between our perceptions and reality. If I look up and see the moon, then there is something that uh, exists in space and time that matches what I perceive. And that if you take evolution by natural selection seriously, then that is precluded. Our perceptions are there. They're there to guide adaptive behavior full stop. They're not there to show you the truth. In fact, the way I think about it is they're there to hide the truth because the truth is too complicated. It's just like if you're trying to, you know, use your laptop to write an email. What you're doing is toggling voltages in the computer. But good luck trying to do it that way. The reason why we have a user interface is because we don't want to know that quote unquote truth, the diodes and resistors, all that, that terrible hardware. If you had to know all that truth, you know, your friends wouldn't hear from you. So what evolution gave us was perceptions that guide adaptive behavior. And part of that process, it turns out, means hiding the truth and giving you eye candy. Hoffman's approach requires a radical reformulation of our notion of the nature of objective reality and of our notion of time. In light of the evolutionary results, he proposes that consciousness, rather than space-time and physical objects, is fundamental. Latitude is, our best science is telling us that space-time is not fundamental. So why is that important here? Well, for centuries, deep thinkers thought of earth, air, fire, and water as the fundamental elements. It was a reductionist kind of idea. Nothing was more elemental than you could sort of build everything up from those. When we got the periodic table of elements, 
we realized that, of course, we want to study earth, air, fire, and water. There's combustion science for fire. There's, you know, there's sciences for all these other things, water and so forth. So we're going to do science for these things, but fundamental? No, no. If you're looking for something fundamental, those are the wrong building blocks. Earth has many, many different kinds of elements that project into the one thing that we call Earth. If you don't understand that there's silicon, that there's iron, that there's all these different kinds of things that project into what we call Earth, you're hopelessly lost. You, you're not fundamental. You're not going to get there. And then after the periodic table, then we came up with quarks, leptons, and gluons, the particles of the standard model of physics. And so we actually now know that if you really want to get fundamental, the periodic table isn't it. It's good for chemistry. And it's just wonderful for chemistry. But if you're trying to go deep, fundamental, what is the fundamental science? That's not it. You're going to have to go to quarks, leptons, and gluons, and so forth. Well, now we've discovered space-time itself is doomed. Quarks, leptons, and gluons are just irreducible representations of the symmetries of space-time. So the whole framework on which consciousness research is being based right now is doomed. And for me, these are my friends and colleagues that are doing this. They're brilliant. My feeling is I'm so sad that they're stuck with this old framework because if they, they weren't stuck like with earth, air, fire, and water, you could actually make progress. I mean, so it doesn't matter how smart you are. If you start with earth, air, fire, and water, you're not going to get anywhere. I'm looking for a theory beyond space-time that's a dynamical theory. I would love to find a theory of consciousness in which the dynamics of consciousness itself will give rise to the geometry that the physicists are finding beyond space-time. If we can do that, then we'd have a completely different way of looking at how consciousness is related to what we call the brain or the physical world more generally. Right now, all of my brilliant colleagues, they're assuming space-time is fundamental. They're assuming that particles are fundamental, quarks, gluons, leptons, and so forth elements, atoms, and so forth are fundamental, and that therefore neurons and brains are part of objective reality, and that somehow when you get matter that's complicated enough, it will somehow generate conscious experiences by its functional properties. But they're all doing it within space-time. All of the work that's being done on consciousness and its relationship to the brain is all assumed something that our best theories are telling us is doomed, space-time. There's no such thing as space-time fundamentally in the laws of physics. There is no threshold that makes us greater than some of our parts, no inflection point at which we become fully alive. We can't define consciousness because consciousness does not exist. Addressing the hard problem of consciousness, Hoffman proposes a bold idea. Consciousness isn't just a byproduct of our brain's workings, but a fundamental aspect of the universe. This shifts the conversation from trying to find consciousness in the brain, like searching for a tiny pilot inside, to seeing consciousness as a pervasive and fundamental force. Consider, for example, the way Hoffman addresses the complex relationship between quantum theory and consciousness. He suggests that the bizarre, observer-dependent nature of quantum phenomena might mirror the way consciousness shapes our reality. Think of a tree falling in a forest with no one around. In quantum mechanics, it's as if the tree both falls and doesn't fall until someone observes it. Hoffman proposes that our consciousness could play a similar role in creating the reality we experience. Perhaps reality is some vast interacting network of conscious agents, simple and complex, that cause each other's conscious experiences. Actually, this isn't as crazy an idea as it seems, and I'm currently exploring it. But here's the point. Once we let go of our massively intuitive, but massively false assumption about the nature of reality, it opens up new ways to think about life's greatest mystery. I bet that reality will end up turning out to be more fascinating and unexpected than we'd ever imagined. Hoffman's ideas have sparked considerable interest and debate, but it's worth mentioning that they are an active area of research. The scientific community is actively investigating the validity and consequences of his theories. Critics, while intrigued by Hoffman's ideas, highlight their speculative nature and the challenges of empirical testing. 
These theories also provoke discussions about their implications for our comprehension of consciousness and the connection between the mind and reality.